Yo, what's good everybody? My name is Sunny Oranges, and today we're going to be talking about The Flash Season 8, Episode 1. We back, baby. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Yeah. So, let's get right into it. So, we start off this episode in the Central City Park, or the CCPP. Nah, I'm not going to that. The end is nigh. It's really starting Armageddon right now. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay, so we go to the next shot and okay, wow. It is really an Armageddon out here. Cars burning and Jesus. And then we get the first shot of Destro. The first shot of Destro. Finally get to see him in the flesh. And he... He presses his belt and he teleports right out of there. Probably trying to go to bear. So we open up to present day. It's um, Barry and Iris. I mean, not Iris. Caitlin. <laughs> and... And they're talking... Uh, Caitlin is talking about Killer Frost and how she's trying to go after that, um, one muscly guy, I forgot what his name was. Don't really care about his character either, so, whatever. And, you know, she's just like, she knows that she doesn't, she knows that he doesn't like her at all, or love her. And, you know, she's just like, I can't believe it. So... Barry and Caitlin, Caitlin's still talking about Frost, and, you know, she's just like, I wish I could, I wish she would listen to me and all that stuff, and she would do what I want her to do, you know, like, because she's making the wrong choice, the guy doesn't like her, or love her, and he probably never will, so, yeah, sorry for the noise in the background. So then they're eventually interrupted by an emergency alert. A train is about to collide, so yeah. So Flash zooms to the trains and tries to stop. He eventually goes in the trains and he will breaks them all out of a window. I guess it's just one person or maybe he got the others, but I have no idea. Doesn't matter, I guess they're all safe or whatever, so, whatever. Now, who could have changed those tracks is what I'm saying, I don't know. Caitlin, Barrett just tells her that, you know, just like, hey, let's just let Frost be Frost and just let her do what she wants. She'll eventually figure it out or maybe everything will work out. Caitlyn, she's like, you're right, and, you know, she's like, well, that's why I'm thinking maybe I should get back in the game. I mean, here are some people saying that, like, um, Caitlyn's gonna get with Thawne, which is very weird to me, but <laughs> whatever. So, we open up with Iris, and she's talking to Detective Kramer, if I'm not mistaken, Kramer. Yeah, Kramer. And she has her own podcast in a new building. Yeah, she upgraded. They were just talking about um her being a metahuman, Kramer being the first detective metahuman, and just, you know, the metahuman and the CCPD. You know. Elegar walks in and, you know, she's just very happy. And Iris, she says that she's going to need a director in chief or something. I don't know. They're just supposed to, it was just a job, a promotion, and Allegra feels like she isn't ready for it. But Iris is like, mm -hmm. I think you're ready for it, and you know, you need to practice. So she believes in her. Allegra says, no. Yeah. But. They just handle the stories and tell them the story they should write about and all that stuff. So, 
so Bear and I are at home, they're talking, and Barry starts talking about the kids and how they come to visit from 2049 eventually, and you know, yeah. I hope we don't see them again. Maybe like one episode or two, but nah, I'm just hoping we don't see them again. Uh, eventually, they get the knock at the door, and it's Ray. We all love Ray. Ray's amazing. Ray's the best. So, Ray makes himself at home, and yeah. We eventually turn to Mercury Labs, and they're holding a chip. Eventually, this some um, card game. This card gang, I mean. <laughs> It's the, um, the family rug, family rug rats or something, I don't know, uh, whatever. Could someone explain to me, I mean, weren't they in Justice League Unlimited, if I'm not mistaken? Or was that a different team? I feel like they were in Justice League Unlimited. It was that one scene with Batman sitting there with a little girl that kind of looks like Raven. Um, it's a very touching scene. Go watch this in the limit if you haven't. But, um, yeah. So, I don't know. Anyway. They, of course, they take down the guards. They do all that stuff. And, yeah. So, Ray makes himself at home. He pretty much puts down his bags. And, and Iris is like, Can, can't he sh uh, apparently there's a guest room, so he's gonna sleep there, and yeah, I'm like, yeah, can't he string things? Yeah, so we go back to the family, Ravish gang or whatever, I'm just gonna call it the deck, the decks, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna call them the decks or the spades, the deck of spades, yeah, whatever. So... One of them uses their heat vision. So yeah. Then the other girl, the blonde haired chick or the burnet. Yeah. Just the white chick. She uses her super strength or whatever and knocks him down. Uh, the king, he knocks them all down with his super strength. And I think they're very cringy. It's very cringy acting. I don't. I don't think I really like them, and I, I know they're gonna come back, but uh, I don't know. They're just very cringy, but this show's always been cringe. CW's just cringe, so you know, just gonna have to deal with it. So yeah, they beat up all the guards, and they grab the chip, and they're ready to go. So it's the morning time, and. Barry and Iris, they're talking about their plans with Ray, actually. So, Ray is actually going to be in town for a convention, and yeah, he's just going to be talking about his future and what he's going to do after since he left the legend. So, then they stop talking and they hear a knock on the door. It's Chester. We all like Chester. Well, maybe not all of us. Some of us think. He grew on, but I think Chester's very great. We all need a Chester, bro. So, yeah. He tells Ray that he's going to be his assistant for the con. He's just going to run everything for him. And he starts geeking out or nerding out over Ray because he's a big, big fan. You know, he's a tech genius and all that stuff. <laughs> you know, Ray's like, oh, chill, bro. Like, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, so Chester's really nerding out. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, Ray's a nice guy, so he's like, well, you know, glad to see a fan. So we meet up with Barry, and he's actually doing his job. Haven't seen that for a while now. Yeah. So he's working with Creamer, and they investigate the break-in from the deck. From deck gang, you know, from the spades. And yeah, they're just trying to figure out what's going on. 
eventually Kramer asks this question that if she's a metahuman, does that make him uncomfortable? Barry's like, no, because, well, he's a metahuman, so, <laughs> yeah. I get the kind of political stuff they're going for. I hope they don't do too, too much in this season, but, you know, it's there. Anyway, they move over to Allegra, and she is trying to get the guys to pay attention, but, you know, try to pay attention to her, listen to her, but they just ignore her and go off to do their own stories because Allegra wants to talk about the break-in. They tell her that's boring, and, well, the Flash is not there, so it's not that interesting. So, yeah, her job isn't really going so well. And these people say that they know what Iris likes, even though they don't even know who she is. Because they just got hired from a couple days ago. Specifically this girl. And they don't believe in her because, well, like Allegra said to Iris, which I did not say, sorry. But she said that she did not have enough experience as everybody else. And they all went to high, high class, you know, all that stuff. So Barry meets up with Cecile and they're discussing what's going on and, you know, Cecile's just trying to figure out who could have done this and, you know, they're just trying to do the whole normal flash thing, figure out the villain and all that stuff. So they eventually figure it out that, um, it was, uh, burning, someone burned the lock and, yeah. So eventually the SWAT team comes in and they're just all like, you know, Barry and Cecilia are like, what the heck are you guys doing here? And they tell her and they tell them that it's a break in at the um, prison and all the prisoners are released. So, yeah. Barry zooms right in and he finds and he puts all the prisoners back in their prison cells and he looks at the controls and they're all burnt. So. And Chester is still geeking out about Ray. <laughs> and he pretty much just tells him all the details about what's going to happen. Eventually, Ray sits down with um, Chester because Chester says, well, you're going to build your company again. And, you know, maybe you can build a company to help young geniuses like me and everyone else. And... Uh, Ray's like, yeah, I don't really know about that. I kind of want to retire. Yeah, like he's just, you know, he's ready to retire. He left the Legends and he doesn't really have to do his job anymore. So he's just ready to retire. Yeah. Chester's like, well, you can't retire, you know, like you're that smart and all that, and, you know. But Chester, he's like, I mean, Ray's like, you know, I'm kind of done. Yeah, so <laughs> Chester, he goes to the people and he tells them that, sorry, but he's not going to be building a company. He's not going to be doing any of that. And <laughs> they're all mad. So we meet with Iris and she's talking to the con staff or whatever. I don't know. I guess the producers or runners, whatever. And she starts talking about flick music, filk music. What is filk music? I, I don't, I've never heard of that. I don't know what that is. Someone tell me in the comic section. But um, yeah. so yeah, it's some cringy lines here, but yeah, between her and that blue hair girl, not her and Allegra. Anyway, Allegra tells her that the people did not listen to her, like we all know, and, um, yeah. She's just like, I told you I wasn't ready for this, and they think I'm unexperienced because I haven't been doing this for that long, as they are, as they have, and... So, we meet up at Star Lab, and... Barry and the rest of the team are trying to figure out who did this because they still didn't figure it out. But yeah. 
eventually Chester comes in and he's just really depressed and you know Cecile can feel it and he's like she's like cheer up and all that stuff they eventually find out who they are because of crypto everybody invests in that cryptocurrency so we meet up with the gang and they're trying to steal like 50 million dollars uh they hired a hacker or whatever and the hacker eventually does crack the code and he's like let's go who wants to be a millionaire eventually they kill the hacker even though he said he's been working with them for years and you know it's just very eventually flash shows up and why the heck is he standing like that <laughs> What the heck kind of body movement is this? I mean, is it really like that tight on your grant? Maybe it is that tight, I don't know. But um, yeah, he's like, I'm here to stop you. And the team underestimates him and because the girl in the middle, if I remember, well, they probably don't know, but um, the woman, she can read minds, so she can predict the stuff before it happens. So, yeah. So she tells them telepathically what to do, and Flash uses Flash time and, well, kicks all their butts. So, yeah. look at this right here. I am super glad they didn't have him get his butt kicked because I am so tired of these superheroes getting their butt kicked, even though they shouldn't be. I get it. I don't know why it happens, but. I'm kind of tired of it. So then he grabs this guy's head and he turns it towards the king. And the other girl, the leader, she's just so surprised how that happened. Thing is, you may be able to predict the future, but just because you can tell what's going to happen doesn't mean it's... He can stop time, okay? Like, it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, you don't know when he's gonna do it. Yeah, you probably couldn't tell people when he's gonna do it in time, so. He was like, you changed the deck. So we meet up with um, Chester and he's doing the live stream. He gets Barry in here and he's like, Barry, have you checked out the simulator? Barry's like, and Chester says, I was in the simulator, Barry. And yeah, they're just having a good time. It's basically Comic Con. Anyway, Ray shows up and he's just like, you know, Barry's like, hey, Ray, get in the live stream. And Chester, you know, he's still very sad for what he told Ray. He feels really bad. So, yeah, he just gives Barry the phone. And yeah, and Barry tells me well, he wasn't scared of me. Uh, and Ray's like, I know, I know. I, I did something to him, so I gotta fix it. So, yeah. It's pretty bad. Anyway, Allegra gets all of their attention, all the writers, and she's like, you know, she gives them all notes, and they, and she tells them that, no, we cannot run this story. We need to run the story that I told you guys to do. And they question her, but then they do it, and she's like, she reminds them about what this whole studio's about. It's about citizenship, the citizens. Like, it's great that they can get a word from the mayor and all that stuff, but it's what about the janitor or the or the guy walking his dog or the single mother, you know, all that stuff, which I think was pretty cool. It was pretty good but development for her, and yeah, I like that. It's good. Of course, this girl, you know, she doesn't believe in that. Tell the big celebrities they get the most news. Yeah, I have to see where she comes from and. Like her does too. But they eventually accept and you know they're just like okay. 
So we meet up back at the con and um, Iris is having an interview with Ray and she's just discussing, you know, what he has in plan for the future. Ray tells Iris that um he's gonna, you know, he quit being a legend and he was thinking about maybe making a company, a new company for inspiring geniuses like him. And, you know, that gets Chester's spirits. But he basically says, I don't know what I'm gonna do for the future. I don't know what the future adults. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. So they end the interview and Destro shows up finally and he tells everybody to run or they will die. So Barry shows up on the scene and he's just like, what do you He's like, who are you? And so Destro, he turns into a gigantic beast and <laughs> He pretty much turns into his alien form, which I'm going to have to agree with people on this one. It is pretty good CGI. I haven't seen this well as CGI on CW for a little while, you know, ever since Stargirl. So, yeah, this is pretty good CGI right here. It's a good start to a season. So Barry starts zooming around him, trying to, you know, knock him out or whatever. Eventually, Destro, he pretty much just smashes the ground and makes Barry fly out the building and he is landed on the ground. Oh my god. I mean, I think Barry would have more damage than that, but apparently... So, Destro, he walks over to him and he's like, I'm here to kill you, Flash. Eventually, Ray shows up, and he's like, team up. So they start blasting Destro until Iris and Chester said the he's over there behind them. So he can teleport or make holograms of himself or whatever. So then Barry, he makes a, an illusion or... A, dang it, I forgot what it is. <laughs> image or whatever a mirage a speed mirage or whatever yes yeah, speed mirage sorry there and destro he punches he knocks their lights out and sends them to the and then barry he's like could you at least tell me why you're trying to kill me what did i so destro reveals that barry is the one who destroyed the future. He's the cause for the city to outbreak in the first scene, the last first scene, the start of the episode. Yeah, he's the reason. You can see this cool scene of him running through the whole scene. So Destro, he goes in for the final blow and Ray comes out of his belt and he makes it all malfunction. Probably pulled a whole bunch of wires and whatnot. This makes Destro teleport, and, well, they're all Scott. So, they make it back to Star Labs, and they're just, like, trying to know what was that, and who was that. Barry convinces them, he said, well, why don't I just talk to him? He told me what I did, so let me just talk to him and try to convince him that I'm a good guy. Obviously, the rest of the team doesn't think this is a good idea, but they go with it. Eventually, they meet up with Allegra. Irish meets up with Allegra. Allegra tells him that you were right. I was made for this job, and it was pretty tough, but I made it work out all in the end. So, Eventually, Destro does show up, and um, Chester tells Barry that he's here. So that's just like, I'm here to kill you, and all that stuff, and Barry, Barry's just like, well, you're gonna kill me anyways, 
So let's talk. He tells him that he's not going to run away. He's not going to do anything. And yeah. So accepts. And they talk it out. So Barry tells Destro to read his mind. And yeah, so he does. He lights up his eyes and he can tell that Barry is a noble and loving guy and he would never hurt anybody. Well, he would never hurt anybody. <laughs> I wasn't trying to destroy the city or the universe or the planet. And Destro can see that and he tells Barry that he has five days, which is going to be the five episode run. Sorry about that noise in the background. Five days to convince him that he will not be a villain. So I thought Destro was great in this episode. There was a very great introduction to Destro. Um, it was amazing. It was the best episode ever. Maybe not the best episode ever, but you know, it was a really good start to introduce them. But what the thing he said about the five days, so how is Barry gonna turn evil? Is he gonna mess with him mentally or something? Maybe Destro is the reason that he turns evil. Maybe he forgot. Maybe someone wiped his mind. Who knows? But yeah, I'm guessing that Barry's gonna break down mentally. So yeah. Now, their team, I'm hoping they don't come back, but I know they will. I know they're going to come back, and I don't know. I just really don't want them to come back there. It was so cringy. It was so, so cringy. I, I really don't want them to come back, but they will, unfortunately. But yeah, Barry created this whole thing. Now... I'm wondering what could be the cause. Is Barry going to get this yellow suit? Is that how it's going to happen? Um, who's going to break him down mentally to create this stuff? I mean, it doesn't really look that bad right now from this shot. Who knows how the rest of the city looks. But from here, it doesn't really look too, too terrible. Could it be Red Death, maybe? Maybe it is Red Death. I don't know. We probably won't see it. But who knows? I mean, maybe Ian will come in and he maybe might be Red Death. Who knows? This could lead to the red suit. This could lead to that. Who knows? I mean, it could lead to the red suit guy. I mean, yellow suit guy. Who knows? Maybe Grant will finally get his yellow suit. So, this has been Sunny Winters. Um, I would give this episode a 9 out of 10 because I didn't like the game. But don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, and tell me in the comment section what did you think about it? What is Filk music? Please put me on with something. And yeah, hope you guys liked. Thank you. See you guys later.